Good day. From our classic rock corner series, stay tuned for a guitar tutorial on Steve Miller's <laughs> I don't know what happened there, folks. Good day, Mike Violetta String Sound Studios. I apologize for the beginning there. I don't know what happened and went to the closing screen. Um, doing this is always fun and keeping my eye on everything. So trying to relax and just teach here. Uh, welcome to our live stream. As I mentioned before, we are doing Steve Miller's Classic Rock Corner Series and we're doing Steve Miller's The Joker. Okay, in this live stream, we'll be talking about five different concepts or at least probably more that will enable you to get this grooving. And one of the first things I want to talk about, okay? One of the first things I want to talk about is how this tune is played with respect to tuning. The whole guitar is tuned down a whole step. And we're gonna go through that. And if you can see, I have my tuner, and let's do that first, all right? So your whole guitar is gonna drop, and we're gonna start with the sixth string, okay? If I take a look at my sixth string here, it's tuned to a D. So you have to drop the whole thing down a whole step, all right? Everything's down, so it's really in, um, in the key of F, okay, if you, were to, if you were to play this, all right? But he wants that lower sound and he's strumming chords and playing riffs and you know using the open Gs and the Cs and the first position chords, things of that nature. So what we're doing is going to uh, Tune it down, and I'm gonna do that again. So here's your sixth string open. Yes. And for, uh, just briefly here, and for the best experience, join um, YouTube, subscribe to YouTube, probably one of the better platforms to watch on. And also Vimeo. People, please join Vimeo. It's actually better. Uh, subscribe to String Sound Studios at Vimeo. It's actually even better than YouTube, and they are going public, so they're really starting to get some steam. So let's get get on Vimeo. Great, uh, more security. I think the audio is better and the video is better on that. And we are uh, just sorry, a little break here. We're streaming to a whole bunch of platforms today. I got you know uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, um, not Vimeo, but uh, not Instagram. YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, uh, D Live, Daily Motion, VK Live. So there's a whole bunch of different ones popping up. And we are multi streaming. All right, let's go back ahead now. When we did the sixth string, there's your D. Next, fifth string. Okay. So that's a G. Well, let's tune that up a little bit. Okay, next, right? So that fourth string is going to be a C, normally a D. I'll leave it there. It's just a trifle bit sharp. There's my F, which is normally a G in standard tuning. Okay, the, this second string will be an A. And this, of course, will be another D. And that 
much how you tune the guitar down the whole stuff so make sure you tune it back up if you're playing something else and uh, you want to play it in that tune. now the first thing we're going to do we talked about tuning that was one concept okay there's a whole bunch of different things we're going to talk about with doing this but one of the first things if i'm teaching someone this song as i'm teaching people here on uh on the multi-stream okay i'm going to do the bass line and that's a good way to play it. So we're going to zoom in and we're going to do the bass line. I guess I can shut the tuner off now. All right. I'm going to do the bass line. And you, you can see what I'm doing there. And then we're going to add the chords with the bass line. Ready? Now let's zoom in and let's go. So I will show, zoom in. There's my microphone. You got to see it. I'm going to zoom over here a little bit. Okay. I'll hide behind. Hey, Kelly. Oh, good. All right. How's it going? Yeah, tell some more people to watch. <laughs> we got any more people watching? I think they watch. They don't chat. All right, I'll hide behind. Uh, I'll hide behind my uh, chat box there. All right, here we go. So this song is based on a G chord, and I would do them in first position, not second. Right? A G chord, a C chord, and a D chord, and that's about it. We got a D sus in there somewhat time later. But what I like to do is do the bass note first. So let's take a look at that, okay? Try to hold steady here. Now, it's going to be based off a G, obviously, by first chords of G. We're gonna do follow the bass player when you listen to this and do the bass line first. So you really hear the grooves, watch. And I'm playing up here as I always do so you don't have to watch two things or I don't have to split the box, okay? Now, that's just a, that was a quick G chord right to a C chord. I'm going to play the bass line. This is G chord. Watch. Open A. So again, and I'll do that slow and I'll do it in time. Notice there's rests in there. So you can give that a little bit of a rest if you're playing guitar. Like the bass line, the bass player though is letting it ring. But on the guitar part, you're going hmm? Let's continue. So let's do that again. Here's your G. Open A. Rest. Now what do we do? We're going to go to a G chord. But we're just playing the bass line still. So it's D, E, D, D. Then he does the bass line going down. We're going to do that in a moment. So let's take it from the edge. The edge is the beginning. Three, go. All right. Again, G, G, A, open A. B, uh, then C, then D, E, D. Okay. That's off your D chord. This isn't quite a D chord right here. That's where your D chord comes in, right? And those bass notes are all eighth notes on the, uh, when they hit the chord. The approach notes are 16th notes, okay? Starting on on the upbeat, on the half beat, okay? So, rest. Play this with me again. Three, four, and. Rest. Rest. Then we do the other bass line in a minute. One more time. Three, four, and. Okay, now what happens? Well, it's just a straight bass line. We're not going to involve the chord in that probably throughout the whole uh, live stream, although you could, because I want you to just get that bass line and get that feel and play things in time. All right, let's take a look. Again, we're going to go back to a C chord. So he plays the D. Now I play the open A. All C. to my G. 
So the bass line goes like this, the last part. Back, now right back to the beginning. Right? These are all 16th notes, groups of 16th notes. You have two starting on the half, half beat on the upbeat, okay? In the middle of beat two on the A, B again. And this is on B3, okay? Of the se uh, second bar. That's a 16th note. Da, da. Open A. Sometimes people do this. And you can do that too. My point is get the rhythm going. You can play two open A's at the end. Watch. Open A. See that? Back to the F sharp. When you're playing these 16th notes, all right, try to come up with some speech rhythms, like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, all right? But you have something like this at the end. Three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Yes, they are counted traditionally. Um, one and a two and a three and a four and a like that. And the sixteenth notes are four. We're in four four time, by the way. We're in common time, okay? And the sixteenth are four evenly spaced notes inside of one beat, okay? Oh hi, hi rocks. It's my wife. Sounds very good. Good. I'm glad it sounds good. All right, let's play that bass line a few times, and then we will add the chords. I'm going to show you how to add the chords with the bass line, okay? It's kind of on the simple side, a simple to, uh, tune. However, you still have to practice it. And believe me, I didn't just uh, you know, say, I'm going to do this and just decided five minutes ago. I go through everything I'm playing, whether it's difficult or whether it's easy. All right, let's take it from the edge. Whole bass line. Ready? Three, four. goes back to begin. Now we're going to do it. I'm going to do it really slow for you. Three, four, and. Okay. So remember, when you're practicing this, you have 16th notes in there. Uh, you want to you say, oh my God, the 16th notes are fast. Well, Let's talk about rhythms as being long and short, okay? Because tempo is what's fast and slow. It's not a terribly fast tempo, but you're busy in here. You're playing short value rhythms. So it might appear, the bass line might, oh my God, that might appear to be quick, all right? It's not terribly quick. Get your hands moving. It's a great beginner song if you're playing for, you know, a few months or three months. It all depends on how much you're practicing, okay? And that's uh, that's important as well. You got to practice everything. I wouldn't, of course, t attempt any type of song <laughs> on your first lesson. And you got to do a lot of finger exercises and get your hands moving, simple reading and things of that nature. Okay? All right, let me just play that bass line with the looper. And I'll, of course, it'll be at tempo. I'm going to play that a few times. That's a simple lick. We'll throw that in later. So there you have that section and work on that bass note first. Remember, you're using eighth notes and sixteenth notes. The first part of the bass note is one and two, sixteenth to eighth, right? 
There's your eighth note, all sixteenths. You gotta count one and two. And da 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 one and ba da 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 da. So make sure you're counting everything's tapping your foot using a metronome with them. All right. I don't want to bore you and put the metronome on, but uh, do practice with it and uh, it'll help you out a lot. All right, let's take a look and see how we're going to, you with me there? Okay, good. Let's take a look and see how we're going to put the chords in with this, right? Just give me a second here, folks. My leg hurts. <clears throat> All right, here we go. It's back. I'll have to deal with the pain. The pain here of teaching live stream lessons, of teaching the Joker. All right, here we go. Now, I'm gonna go through the chords. Uh, the other way you should do this is you should connect it after you learn the chords, all right? It's three chords, four if you wanna include the suspended chord in the chorus, which we will talk about, all right? G chord, all right, now, if you're a novice, a G chord, believe it or not, is a big chord. It could be a hard chord to play. Right? This is why I talk about you playing on your fingertip, doing all those finger exercises, right? Remember to sign up some, for some of my uh, video courses, especially my Pure Beginning Guitar course. That'll help you out a lot. If you're playing, all right, and you're just learning, it's helped uh, thousands of people. All right, 500. All right, two people. I don't know. Uh, sign up. They're really good courses. I'm very thorough when I teach. Here we go. Now, G chord, you need this, this, and this. Your fourth finger goes here. What I tell people, this is a full G chord, all right? So we have the third finger here. We have the B here, that's a B, okay? Then these are open. And that G goes here. Now, quite often when people are doing something, look at my finger here, how it's bent and it goes in. That's the way you're supposed to play and these fingers as well, right? Realize your angle, right? Yeah, we wanna play square. Every time you're doing a, you know, a different chord, yeah, well, not every time, but when you're doing certain chords, this has a more angled shape like that. That's important, right? So we don't wanna to try to go like this and pull this in. It's a little bit more angled, so is the C chord, see? So if you think about my thumb, it's behind the neck, of course, but if I'm playing a chord like this, my thumb is halfway down here, and it's a little bit angled like that, okay? Not that much, maybe less. It's a little bit angled, so it's following that trajectory, but it's happens. So my thumb's going like this, okay? My thumb, that's kind of the angle of my thumb. You're getting real detailed here, but you gotta know that, because you don't want your thumb over here. You don't want it this way, you don't want it straight, because then, oh, the chord's this way, see that? So let's, your thumb, when you're playing, pivots according to what shape you have. You gotta angle this way, you gotta angle that way, okay? So on the G and the C chord, watch that thumb, see it? Angled a little bit that way. What I tell people is, leave this out if you're having a lot of trouble, right? Leave that fourth finger out. All right, so you strum that, if you can do it, fine. If you can't, that's, that would be a six chord if you add the E. It doesn't sound terrible. It's a, you know, it's a fine chord. And you might want to just strum these. It's going to sound fine. Remember, I don't want you doing G chord like this. You could do it that way, but then you got to shift to the bass. Okay? So it's a little bit. I think it's best to do it this way. So here we go. Here's your G chord. Do this first. Do this. You strum this, but try to strum up to the second string to leave this out. But what I want you to do is just go like this. Strum a G chord. Hold it. One, two. Now go to a C chord. Now how do we do the C chord? All right. Well, you take these two fingers, you move them up a string to each adjacent string. Right. So this third finger goes to the fifth string. This goes to the fourth string, right? And you have that same shape. Oh, G chord, C chord. And your first finger goes here. On there, right? So your G is open, your first finger's there. So let's take a look at that C chord. Separately, right? Open G, 
and you, the E chord, the E notes in there as well. Uh, on this chord, I really try to put this in, but again, if you can't do it, just get this going. Now this would be an entirely different chord, major seven sound, okay? not the sound of the song. But get this. Remember, folks, build chords from low to high, you know, and realize where your common tones and your common fingerings are, okay? So you're going like this. There's not really no common tone. I mean, the common tone is G, open, and it's in the, both in the chord. But look at these common shapes here. Common tones, common shapes, common fingerings, okay? Common shape. And then one goes here. That's usually not too bad, people. All right. If you play as a novice, make sure your guitar is um, you know, something you can play. If you have small hands, try using a small, little bit small in that guitar, and not one that's not so thick and deep. Okay. Um, this is a uh, 335. It's got a pretty chunky neck. I don't have huge hands, but uh, you know I can play bigger neck guitars. Here you go. Here's your G chord. Here's your C chord. Now we're going to go to the D. This is going to go to second position. Okay? So remember what I said about my thumb. When I go to the D, my thumb actually goes a little bit this way. Starts angling this way. Because if I take a look at the D, I don't want to be perfectly square. See? I want to be a little bit this way because the D angles this way. And your D chord, okay, you could do this at first. To get that, and the second finger needs to go there. So my first finger is going here on an A note on the third string. You see that? My third finger is going here. You know, be a D note, and my second finger is going here. What note will you have trouble with? This one, right? And it's not so much that you're not pressing it. Okay. It. The point is. You have to play up on your fingertips. What normally happens with people is this one is running into that string. So if you're not up on this third finger, you can press this all you want. Huh? You can press that all you want. You're just not going to get that sound because that's muting it out. So once again, very important, play finger exercises where your hand is like this. Okay? And everything very square to the fretboard. All right, and everything's very bent. Do you always do that play? No, of course you have to do capos and things. But if you can do this, it'll help you play other, you know, other chords or everything. It'll help you play everything, right? Yes, you know, there are times your thumb wants to come over that. Yes, of course you do capos and things, so you don't always play like this. Well, that, that is one of the main things I teach in the, uh, you know, lessons. You got to do this, and you keep doing those finger exercises. Also, with that said, let's get really detailed, all right? I'll get back to the tune, but this is a very novice tune, and you should watch, you know, how you're holding your fingers. L let's check something out here, okay? And I'll show you in a minute. If you take a look at my fingers, I'm not only playing on my fingertips, I'm playing close to the nail, all right? When I'm doing finger exercises. And that's a lot of that, all right? On, you know, these chords here, because you gotta really be up, you gotta really be on your fingertips. And let me show you just on this D chord, I'm going to press and release, and I'll show you this. Okay, so if you take a look at my fingers now, see that? See that? Okay, so look at the angle. So you're not always square. You know, this, this is heading this way. That's that way. It's very important you do that. All right, let's get back. So remember what I said. You can work on the G chord like this, and you can work on the C chord. And the D chord like this. Get to that position. Second position, your thumb's got to move up. Remember that thumb should roughly stay behind, somewhere behind the second finger, right? These are first position chords. Thumb is there behind the second finger, right? Thumb is there. When I go up to here, look at my thumb. It's got to shift, all right? You don't want to try to leave, you don't want to leave a thumb back here and try to play a D chord. This is going to bind. You see that? Get it here, get it out front. Get everything as close to the fret as you can. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, again, G chord, full G chord now. We're gonna do this, all right? So you did this, the C, you did this, just those. You got to the position, I'm 
make sure you pull those off. So let's do this. Watch. Two, just hold it. Next, long value tones. Da, go to the D. Then it goes back to a C. I would like you to play the C, even though you're not, you're gonna play the bass line because that bass line comes out of a C chord and you have to adjust the position. And you will play that later on in the chorus. Here, to a C chord, to a D chord, to a C chord, and back to a G. Just take your time. Take your time when you're practicing. The stuff doesn't happen overnight. Again, this is more of a novice tune. Someone might watch this and go, oh, yeah, that's easy. I, can get I just need to know the chords so they're familiar with all these chords. You know, they just need to know the progression, maybe how it's strummed a little bit. All right, now we're going to take a sip of water. Let me take a sip. Ah, break. Okay. Now what we're going to do is show you how to put the chords in with the bass line. We're going to play one bass line, then the chord, which sounds hip, right? So you don't just go, you're going to play bass line, strum the chord, watch. Then the other, release the chord. Gives you time to get to the chorus. So you play the bass. Well, it should be right on the G chord setup, right? You go to the C chord. Okay? Watch. And the, playing the bass line, when I hit that C, I'm moving to the C chord. Same thing on the D. Open D. Okay? It's advanced. Take advantage of that open string and move. Your motion is always forward thinking. You always got to go, I'm thinking, I'm moving. Music is moving, okay? It's in time. It's rhythm, all right? Rhythm. Definition of rhythm. A pattern of movement in time. Let's keep it simple, right? There, the, That's rhythm, and there are rhythms, all right? Uh, rhythm, 16th notes, 8th notes, 32nd notes. If you're not you know, familiar with some of these terms, there are all kinds of different rhythms, all right? And rhythm is a pattern of movement in time. And you're making up phrases, musical sentences between playing notes and chords and whatever you're doing in your music, okay? So we have this. Oh, great. I can move. I can play open D, move. Take advantage of that open string. Think ahead. Okay? Another open string. Can you come back to this bass line? All right, again, slow. So the way I'm going to do this is. And again, I think you know that you don't play guitar like this up here, okay? So, <laughs> down here. This is for illustration to show you. All right. I don't think it used to this. You know, this isn't easy doing. By the way, if you're going to play, this, that uh, leads me to something else. If you're going to play this song, and let's say you're using light gauge strings on you know, your guitar, your bending notes, or whatever you're doing, you have some light gauge strings. I would play this song with something that has at least 10 or 11 gauge strings even better. Because what's happening is you're tuning down. And when you tune lighter strings down, they really rattle. I have 11s on here, I think, 11s or 12s. So that's appropriate for this song, all right? You're tuning down. So that's why... 
know, there's all kinds of things going on. You watch people in concerts, you know, they switch guitars and they have this one set up for this tuning, that tuning, this one's for slide. But yeah, this, you know, set you have a guitar set up if you're working in different tunings for, you know, especially drop tunings and things, uh, a little bit thicker strings. At least that's my view on it because you don't want the strings rattling. But hey, who am I to tell you what to do, right? All right. So there we have that. I'm going to play this with the looper. I'm not going to play it here. Remember, we don't play like that. That's to show you. But uh, let me play with the looper. And I do use a pick. I was using my fingers. I tend to start off the live stream a lot and use my fingers for various reasons. I'll play with the pick. You can't see it, though. Mm -hmm. oh. Is basically your verses. Now, what does he do when he gets into the chords? Well, he plays the same chords, except it's more strummed. You know, you got the bass line, the bass, and the chord going on. So you have that, you know, have that alternating bass chord, right? Now, what I would tell you to do <clears throat> when you're doing the chorus, you know, I'm a picker, I'm a grinner. Well, uh, when you're doing that, keep the rhythm simple. Don't go crazy. And when you strum, do bigger strums. All right? Maybe I'll back out for this, since you know the chords, a little bit. Because I'm going to strum here. All right? And then, you know, at the end of the lesson, I'll play th through mo most of it. But when you're doing the chorus, you want to do a rhythm like this. Like one, two, and three, and hold. Because that's going to give you time to move to the next chord. If you start doing stuff like this. Right, you're playing a lot of funky rhythms in there. If you're doing that, it's going to be hard for you to get to the, the um, chord on time. So, you know, I see guys on YouTube. Yeah, the rhythm goes like this. But let's think. Let's get it right. Let's get there on time first. All right. And we keep the end of the bar or before we do a chord change more less busy let's say more or less the beginning maybe you could be a little busier but i'm not doing a really tough rhythm here i'm going so i'm just going one two three strumming also right? and you'll be strumming down here when you're strumming don't rest don't do this I see people do this all the time they rest the pick right you know on the string and then they do this and then they just and they angle the pick this way right they'll angle it so it's like that and, and they rattle and then on the up strum they try to go like that what you want to do is you want to start higher especially with this because you had a lot of big chords you can strum the fifth string and so forth and so on. I'd rather you see you strum bigger, and then when you go to the D chord, now let's say you go to a D chord, yes, it only has this in it, but it's not such a big deal if you hit that A. You'll learn to control this, all right? But I don't want you resting here, going, you know, the D only has this in it, and resting on the string, and then, you know, people, they bend the string when they're picking. Big, start here, and learn to angle into that. You'll get control of that. You're better off making those, you know, hitting some unnecessary strings and making those mistakes. When you strum, big. One, now this should be down, down, up, down, up, hold. Next chord. Back to the J. C again. J. 
So let's stop there. That progression in um, the chorus kind of has a first, what you call a first and second ending, okay? The last two bars, he goes D. All right, well, the last two chords. And I'm not getting really specific with bars right now. Just hear it. Get to that later. All right, and then it goes back to the beginning of, you know, the chorus. Then later on, once you hit that last C chord, you go to a D chord again, yes. Then we're going to talk about the D sus chord. So let me play the whole chorus. It goes like this. Three. that out. Let's take a look, zoom in a little bit more at the D sus chord. If you get the D chord down, the suspended sound isn't um, much more difficult. So here's my D chord, right? All right, so you want to get that fourth finger, hold the rest of the chord. There's no need to pick anything up. All right, a suspended chord, see sus4, there's different types of suspended chord. All right, this is a suspended fourth chord, has no third. Okay, what it does, it's going to go back to that, and there's your third. So that's very common. It, uh, you know, it resolves back to the major chord. Suspended chord. All right, so that's like your pinball wizard sound, you know. So it's all suspended chords, yeah. Same thing, keep the rhythm simple on this. You go back and forth between that, then he ends up on the G again. Verse. All right, let's play the chorus one more time, then I'll put on the looper, I'll back out, put on the looper, and play it for you, all right? Here's your chorus. so forth and so on you'll hear the d sus chord and it goes back to it all right now remember you gotta practice 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 all right i think it's uh anything else there's really not much to this song oh <laughs> let's get that little riff there you fit that in okay so you know some people call me the gangster love very simple watch open d E. It's a hammer too. We didn't talk much about hammers here. Okay. So hammer that. By what you're doing when you hammer is you're playing a note by use of your fretting hand only. In my case, my left hand. And that's it. But it's kind of hard to throw that riff in if you want to keep the rhythm of the uh, song going. All right. All right, so we'll back out. We'll play it a little bit, and uh, we can all talk about whatever. If you're out there, send me a hi. What I'm doing here, too, this I'm re I redid this song. Um, just so you know, 
I, I did it a while ago when I first started doing live streams. Now I got a much better camera. I got much better audio. But one of the reasons why I, uh, I'm doing it over is because I have nothing to do this week. I'm bad. I didn't prepare. No. I, I wanted to do some tunes over anyway. And my amp is on the spritz. So I brought it to a guy and uh, I'm using a different amp. So, uh, you know, it, it'll sound good. It's, uh, it sounds good with this tune. No, I'm playing very clean. I don't need any funky sounds, so I, I need my uh, Lone Star, my Mesa Lone Star back to do a lot of different tunes. But this this works. I'm trying to find tunes that work, but a very clean, acoustic sounding. Um, of course, I'm using electric, but very clean sounding uh, guitar. There's not a lot of distortion in the Joker and things of that nature. All right, so let's go, and we shall play it from the beginning, and I will use a pick now. See, I can use a pick, folks. All right, here we go. Play a little bit of it for you. There's the joke I dropped my pick. So let's recap what we're doing here, all right? And remember, you're tuning down a whole step. Stop talking. Okay? So that whole guitar gets dropped. Two, using eighth notes and sixteenth note rhythms along with rests. I didn't specify the rests too much. Get the feel of the song, all right? But it does give it a good flavor, meaning rest. Mm. Rest. Da, 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 da. Get the song down. Feel out where those rests are later. I don't want to get into the rest because then we're doing too many things. All right? But when you do rest, watch. Okay? You could do this. Side. Even if you're using a pick. Right here. Watch my right hand. Watch this hand. Rest. And what they do too is resting, you kind of end the chord. But it gets too much for people. And this, you know, to me is a novice song. You'll get the feel for that stuff later. Play the, play the song. You got to do this bass line. Then you got to do the rest, okay? But the rest definitely give it a good flavor. But I taught from the perspective right now of let it ring. So you can get to the next chord and get it in time, all right? To me, that was important. All right, um, you were using, so we did all these concepts. I, sorry, I didn't explain each one as I went, but we tuned down, used eighth note, 16th note rhythms, along with the rest to give it a good flavor. Um, we learned the bass and then the chord, okay? So first we learned the bass lines, then we learned the chords, then we put the bass in with the chords, okay? And of course, strumming correctly and getting a good snap on that. All right? And remember, strum big, folks, all right? Don't rest the pick here and go up, all right? Right on the string and rattle off, all right? Let's strum big. And when you're strumming, you can just practice this here, all right? On your open strings. Strumming, remember to use a little bit of elbow and wrist. Right. Get that wrist flexible. So these are all little intricacies you have to work out. Right. So if I'm strumming here, I'm not totally stiff. 
He has the interesting thing, about, especially if I'm playing with a pad, right? My tuner's going crazy. You can see what notes I'm, I'm talking in. All right. The thing when you're playing with a pick, I'm stiffer with my when I do single notes. You know? Why? Because you usually, you know, single notes or double stops, they're not as big and beefy as chords. When you're strumming chords, you know, you're dealing with all those notes. So your projection of is um, you know, is a little bit louder, right? And of course when you're strumming chords, you're gonna rattle if you're too stiff on it. So it's like shaking water off your hand when you're strumming. On the upstrum, up, right? Down. Use that wrist, too. Along with your elbow, right? Um, so we, we did a, quite a bit today on this song, although it's a beginner song. Um, we're almost running into an hour, which I'm fine with. I hope you're fine with that. Uh, I, I see you know things on YouTube and stuff. Look, to each his own. I think it's better to be thorough and people looking at videos and going, oh, I'm going to watch this one because it's five minutes. You got to be careful with that, all right? Because you're gonna people are going to leave a lot of things out. And, you know, I might have left a lot of something, not a lot, but I might have left some, you know, things out on purpose, of course, because I don't do that. <laughs> uh, all right, so remember your homework is to listen to this song, practice all the things I talked about in here. And give us a call if you're on Long Island, especially Long Island, New York, and a little bit New York City. But we send people to people's homes. And, of course, anywhere in the country or in the world, we can get you on a Zoom lesson. Right? So I do electronic lessons. And I have people working for me as well, like Kelly there. Why She's uh, in the uh, studio here at a, in a different location, monitoring and helping me out. So we have a whole bunch of teachers working for us and we are String Sound Studios. The other thing is if uh, you wanna check it out and check out all the live streams, okay? I try to do these weekly. I'm gonna hopefully bump it up to a couple times a week and they're all free. You can tune in. As you can see, you have the chat box there. Uh, remember, if you want to just work with videos, you're a beginner, I got Beginner Intermediate, I got some great beginner intermediate courses out there, okay? So like the Pure Beginning Guitar Course, the Beginning Blues Guitar Course, the Midway Blues Guitar Course. I also have a Pure Beginning Ukulele Course. And very simple, they're very you know, inexpensive, $30. You're gonna get scores with that. You're gonna get backing tracks. Notice I play along with backing tracks when I do the live stream. I always try to find a backing track to play along with. If not, I'll make one up. Uh, what else? Yes, plenty of things we do here, okay? And we'll keep it going with the live streams. Hope they're working out for you. And remember uh, to sign up, okay? At stringsoundstudios.com and play like a pro. Let me know what you'd like me to do on these live streams here. Of course, my mouse is crazy. It was due to technical difficulties today. So let me know what you would like me to do on these live streams. And as we keep going, we plan you know, to do all kinds of different things, all right? Hey, what happened? Look at that, more technical difficulties. All right, we'll see you later. Hmm, let me fix this here. What the heck happened? Yeah, my mouse is bugging out. <laughs> I, I gotta ruin that live stream now. Let me see if I can fix this. What's going on here? Come on, move. All right, whatever. I'll fix it in a little while. Thank you very much, bye.